we have taken many of our themes for this year from different artistic perspectives. The artist that I'd like to introduce you to today is Greg Hatton. He is one of the most talented photographers and videographers that I have had the pleasure and honor of meeting. He currently um, lives uh, in our guest house. And so we've had to have I've gotten to have lots of informal interactions. I can tell you that uh, among the things that he's done um, within the year or so that I've known him um, is to um, get onto the uh, cover of the 10th anniversary of Flux Magazine, as well as having a whole host of photos um, on Black Lives Matter represented within that edition. Um, he is the winner from um, Cannes Film Festival of a, a short film um, contest, very unique, that we may have a chance to um, see the fruits of. And he is also um, one of the primary driving forces and constructive forces behind a um, new feature length film that was done at the beginning of uh, this year, filmed at the beginning of this year. Um, during COVID, oh, actually last year, um, the autumn of last year, and he's been working on it um, for the entire beginning of this year. And it's getting really close to being done. It's quite amazing. So, so those are some of the things I can tell you about Greg and um, his, um, his vast uh, experience on the subject of looking with light. And it seems that our subject today of seeing our way through has to do a lot with light. So with that, I, I give you Greg Hatton. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Greg Hatton. That was a beautiful introduction, Renee. Thank you so much for that. And thank you guys for having me here. Um, the topic, and just to get straight into it, because I know we have a little bit of a time thing Cinematography and photography, um, the art of image making is basically the study of light and understanding how light falls on the subject, um, on whatever the subject is, if it's a car, if it's a plant, if it's a person, you know, it, it's how the light falls on it and how you use the tool of the camera to capture that image. Um, but What's interesting about that is that, you know, it's not just the tool that gets the image made and everybody celebrates that. It's the person that's seeing the, the story in the image and that's able to translate that story through the image. That's what used to be celebrated, but now it's a little bit different in the world. So it's interesting because the shot selection, the choice of choosing a, photo a, a piece of uh, an image or making a film or how you shoot a film, that is basically the idea of seeing through the scope of a, of a story and finding a way with images to tell that story effectively. Now, Renee would definitely tell you that I'm, I've been championing the, the idea that there's through lines in everything. And it was about two years ago that I really started to think about how everything that we do in life is interconnected. Every, every single thing, the way you do one thing is the way that you do another, even if you don't realize it. And so seeing through, you know, seeing our way through is interesting because in the filmmaking process, you come out, a director or a writer may say, this is a piece of material that I wanna make into a film. I wanna tell this story about whatever it is that they wanna tell. How can we do that? Can you imagine this world with me? And can we create something like that to show a bunch of people who have never seen it before and they can get the emotion that I'm trying to, to pull out of it? So it's a discovery moment where you have to really look at the material and see if it's something that you can bring to life, if it resonates with you or if you're just, you know, just trying to do it. And I think that the movies, the films, and the photography that really sticks with us are images that did the right thing to go through the process of understanding the story to present it to you, the end viewer. 
and to have it have an effect on you. And it's a very long process to do that. You know, you have to source out why this story resonates with this person that's created it. You have to source out why it resonates with you. And you have to look at your tools. You have to look at the people around you and see how they can all work together to create this image that's going to convey the story. And it's a very long process. Some people fall off. Some people can't do it. Some people might not like it. You can find the people that do, but you go through this process of finding a way to tell this story. And in the end, you might have a movie or a piece of photography that really, really sings. And I think we've all seen it. If you think about the movies that you've liked, and the, music, the movies that you don't like, the movies that did well or the movies that did not do well, it's because of that. They did not find that way through to you. Or if it just didn't do well in general, they just didn't find a way to do it effectively. So going back to the point about the through lines and seeing how everything's kind of connected, I started looking at how my journey to creating images um, really started to speak to who I was and what my goal in life was and what my message was going to be. And I started to see that through the process of me learning how to do these, uh, how to use these cameras and tell these stories, I was able to understand more of who I am as an artist. And the way that that happened, I believe, is that the process of me learning how to use the cameras, even though I was failing a lot, a lot of the pictures didn't come out right, the videos didn't come out right, and I was getting really frustrated and everybody else has great pictures and there's all <laughs> these movies that are awesome and how come mine aren't that good? It's just part of the process of learning you know it's and and that's just that process though the through line is that that's the same process for anybody that's learning how to dance how to paint how to cook how to raise kids how to be an aerial artist you know it's the same process that through line is basically there and it's complete every step of the way in all of our lives so it's it's interesting because when you're thinking about seeing your way through whatever there is in front of you, you do kind of do the same thing that a photographer might do. You're looking for the light that's gonna best put this image in front of you so that you can gravitate towards it. And you can do and find the path to it. And then when you find that light, when you find how you wanna frame it, you can attack it a little bit better and it starts to show on you, in you, and from you, to everybody around you. And it's the consistency of, of that fact is complete. There's not a way that I've seen it only work in certain situations. You know, I, yeah, there's a little saying that I have, and it's like, if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're not gonna grab ham and cheese. Like there's just no way to do that because you know the path that you have to go down to make this peanut butter and jelly sandwich is the peanut butter and the jelly not the ham and cheese. So, I mean, it's really that simple of an idea of how once you can see what it is that you want, once that light is shining on it and you find it and it's, it looks a certain way, you have to go after it and you have to go into it. And um, it's not always easy, but it's definitely worthwhile. Um, and you, you gain a lot from it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of perspective that comes with going through that journey of learning how to do whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, many, people, many people would argue that the journey is more important than, than the destination. And I kind of believe that myself because I mean, you, that's where you find life. That's where you really find yourself living is going through and trying to discover these different ways to achieve what it is that you want in life. Or, it doesn't even have to be that deep. It's just, if you want to play basketball and, or you want to take pictures or garden, you know, the knowledge that you gain by going through the practice, going through the sweat, going through all the, the mistakes to pick yourself up again and then do it, you've made yourself stronger just because of that. It, it, it really, the through line is that that is true in every scenario that you look at in life for every person. 
you know, and it's a, it's beautiful how simple it is, but it's also amazing how easily it's masked. And a lot of times we don't see that connection of how we practice our dance and how we practice our cooking, you know, <laughs> it, it's really interesting. So there's a lot of different things that we can talk about on this. Um, from the filmmaking standpoint, I mean, Renee was talking about a film that we, uh, we made last year and we got into con and this was a competition that was very, very unlikely for us to win. Um, we basically had to shoot on film and it was an eight millimeter camera, one roll of film. We had to shoot and edit in the camera and that basically means every time you pulled the trigger and the phone, the film rolled, that was a take, no matter what. If you messed up, you messed up. So we did that. And uh, we that was just one part of the obstacle. The other part is that you couldn't process it. You had to take the film out. As soon as you finish rolling it, pack it up, send it to London immediately. They process it. You have to create a score for it. Send the score to them separately. They process it, marry it, and then they view it amongst all the other people that entered this competition to see whose film was the best. There was like 1,165 1, entries uh, and they chose eight as the winners and ours was one of the eight. And the crazy part about it is that we would not even see it until they announced who won. So <laughs> we won this competition. Um, with the ticket to con, you know, the pandemic happened, so there was no trip to France, but we, we, we went through creating this idea and creating how we can shape it in this small package. I mean, the, the movie's only three minutes long and how we can convey a story that's really gonna tell a lot and move somebody on an emotional level in such a small amount of time. And it was difficult to even think about. And then we had the COVID happening and nobody was there and the deadline was coming up and we just really like wanted to do it and keep our art alive. So we went for it, you know, we, we figured out a way to do it and we shot it and it won. <laughs> so it was pretty amazing. So um, that's that story. But to, to kind of put a bookend on the idea of, of seeing you know, our way through is that that connection to, to creating images, to doing whatever your practice is, and even in your own life, whatever it is that you, each of you might be into. If you think back of any success that you've ever had in anything, big or small, think back to how many times you had to figure out the scenario, how much, how many hours you had to put into reading a book or training yourself to paint or you know, studying a musical instrument. That's the journey. And that journey is the same journey that we have to go through with pretty much everything that we do in life. It might just look a little bit different, but that growth process is, is how, and it's really what seeing our way through is all about. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Greg, do, would you like to show us um, a few of your photographs to get a sense of the light? Or do you feel at this point you'd like to show us that film? If you want to show the film, I want to say something about it first. <laughs> uh, we can do all of that, honestly. The, the film's only three minutes and we have, um, what else? Uh, the photos can be shared just as quickly. Uh, I can show you some of the, the photos just to kind of give you guys an idea of the work that's that I do and the photography that I do is kind of based upon uh, the photographers of old like photojournalists and photo documentarians that kind of see the world as it is and and kind of capture it as it is to share with people so that there's a little bit more perspective onto what living is all about so I, I usually I shoot in black and white and I try to just capture people candidly on the street and in the world and all that good stuff. So I will try to share my screen right now. Yeah, there's one right there. So this image was taken in um, Waikiki at the walls. The kids usually jump off and jump into the ocean and have a good time on the boogie boards and all that. And 
you're almost guaranteed a great photograph when you're there uh, if you're really paying attention. The fact that they're silhouetted, it's, you know, it's not so much about individuals in this image. It's more about the activity, the camaraderie, um, and just like, you know, they're jumping off together into the great unknown almost, if you want to look at it like that. They're going after that adventure together. And, and that's what that image was all about. And the choice of the lighting, just to have them silhouetted. I mean, you'll see a lot of that in my work because it really brings out, I think the, uh, the human element, the human shape and form in a world that's so big and so interesting. Uh, so let's see, this is the same at the walls. These kids jump off and go crazy. It's just, it's, it's a good, it's a good life, honestly, here in Hawaii. <laughs> More uh, surfers out at the beach doing their thing. The sunsets here are incredible and they're golden. Um, it's kind of hard to take a bad picture when you're out there. So this is a portrait of a beautiful little girl. I took this picture in Los Angeles. And the one thing that's really interesting about cameras and, and people is that when you're looking through the lens, most photographers can attest to this. I don't know how many people talk about it, but when you look through the lens of a camera and you really start to study light and study people and things, you start to see how beautiful everyone is, everybody, like pretty much at any time of the day. It's just looking for a light to show them in the right light so that you can see that beauty and you can really capture it. This is just a little girl. I don't know who she was. Um, the light fell on her just as you see it. And this is a film picture actually. I took this on a, on a medium format camera. Uh, yeah, and kind of the same thing, walking down the street in Madison, Wisconsin, and this family was sitting at a table and the kid turned around and the light hit his eyes and I had to take it. Didn't want it to be a Coca-Cola commercial, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> this is, this is light. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. This was taking over uh, Seattle, Washington at dawn. And I was flying to Madison, Wisconsin from Honolulu. And it was amazing to see the, the layers of moisture just with the light cascading through them. And these are actually called crepusculus rays when the sun's breaking through like the, the moisture in the air and all that. And um, it, it was just insane to, to be able to capture this from the window of an airplane. And um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable what a world we live in. But again, the light can show you that if you're looking for it. More kids jumping off, just amazing shapes and forms. And again, talking about how the light falls on a person. I mean, this is this picture was taken just outside here, and just one afternoon. And you know, this is a musician. His name is Ayala, and you can really showcase a lot of things with just understanding how you're looking at the subject with photography and cinematography. You can see the person's history. You can see the person's heritage. You can see the pain. You can see the love and struggle. You can see all those things if you just take a moment to look. And this is what we found in this image. Saw a lot of heritage. Saw a lot of authenticity in this man. And, and if you know how to look for the soft light in the shadow and how they complement each other, you can mold and shape an image that can be impactful on site. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, this is Sarah walking through the forest and it's just a great picture. I had to throw that in there because she's in the room. <laughs> um, yes, and here is you know a couple that were walking down the street. This is Los Angeles, California. And um, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this picture. It was just a moment that I had to capture um, the dress, the demeanor, the, the facial uh, expressions, you know, it's amazing to me what cameras do, you know, to capture these moments. I mean, they actually freeze time for us, you know, and, and, and light burns into, this is a film picture. So the light burns into the film and, and shows you the world before you, but 
these are the things that, you know, go very unnoticed. A lot of people would never even have seen this couple walking down the street, but due to this picture, people in Hawaii are talking about them right now. And there's Hawaii before the pandemic hit, like right before um, Waikiki, right at the beach, good times. But I love how you have, this is towards the afternoon. There's a little bit of light and shadow going on right here. I sought this picture because of the lady that's reading the book. There's a lot of definition on her in soft light and that's interesting, but uh, next to her on the right, you see the lady that's in the shadow. And there, it, actually there's a couple in the shadow there. And they're experiencing the same place in different ways. And one's in the light, one's in the dark. And when you see the scope of the scene behind them, it just, there's so many stories that are to be had in this image. And I, I love this image. And that's the last one. A uh, young girl that I met, walked, I met her and her mother. This is Los Angeles as well. And I just asked her to sit and have a picture. And I took it and I shared it with the family. And, I think it's hanging up in their wall somewhere. I don't even know who they are, but the ability to, to understand what pictures do and how people can be impacted by them. Um, I think that it's really awesome to, to share that. And that's why these pictures are here. So that's picture time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'd love to, we, we can show the, the video, but I'd love to hear some, some feedback from some people and see how everybody's feeling about seeing our way through or your way through or anything else. I'd like to thank you, Greg, because I don't have the eye to see things. And so when I see art, I see photographs that someone has captured and they explain it. It's like, aha, it's a wonderful moment. And like you said, every picture tells a story and the complexities that one picture can capture is just awesome. So thank you for your enlightenment and keep going, imua. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Kevin, did you... kind of saw Kevin leaning in there. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed all. Oh, I really enjoyed all the pictures, but um, it was very interesting that one of the couple on the beach with the shadow and the the light. It really, I, I was mesmerized by that. It's really beautiful, and for someone who hasn't been to the island yet. Um, it was it was a great representation. So, um, you know, I wondered what book that woman was reading or what that other person in the shadows was thinking. And it's it's nice that you caught a glimpse of it, but it still kind of gives us wanting more. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's actually the point there, right? With images, like you you want the person that's viewing them to think about what they're seeing rather than just flip through it or you know, swipe left or right, whatever. I mean, pictures in museums, they hang on these walls and you can go in there and some of them, you can just sit in front of them for hours and just think about what the motivation was or, you know, what the story is. And when you learn the story, it's, it, it can be so amazing, you know? And I, I think that, I mean, that's art really. That is art. And to do that through line thing again, that's true for all of us. If we just take a look at each other and see each other as a piece of living art who's gone through different struggles and are making their way through their own lives, you see, start to see that it's very interesting to sit down with one another and just experience what it is to be from another place, to have these different lives, you know? Like, I, before I met Sarah, I mean, I've been to the islands a couple of times and and I have family here, but I never really embraced it. Then I met Sarah and I understand Sarah's life so much more now. You know, like I'm, I'm a black kid from Los Angeles, California. It's very, very different than growing up in Hawaii and being exposed to, to nature like this and to the ocean and all those things. But being here, you get to learn a whole lot more. 
Krista, did you have something? You had your hand up? You're still muted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thanks, Greg. It was really neat to see your, um, to see those photographs are amazing. Uh, they brought to mind what you said about how um, a photo can show us the world we live in. My teacher, my writing teacher, her name's Dina Metzger. She's in her 80s. And when she was around 30, she had breast cancer. So this is like 50 years ago. And she chose to have a radical mastectomy which is an unusual choice at the time. And she chose not to have implants and she chose to have a tree tattooed over her scars on her chest. And that, and someone took a photo of her tattoo and the photo became a poster and hundreds of thousands of women decided not to get reconstructive implants, which turned out to, you know, leak. And this was all, you know, a long time ago. And, you know, her choice and her as the subject and the vision of that photographer made this story. And the, and the people don't know who she is and she didn't mean to tell that story, but her choices and the photographer's vision intersected and affected hundreds of thousands of women. So there is real, what you're saying about through lines, um, that's that's what it brings to mind for me. Thank you. No, it, you're welcome. Thank you for saying that. It's very interesting because um, the point of photography and cinematography, image making in general, it's it's storytelling, right? Like it's always been about storytelling. And as a species, we exist um, by passing stories to one another. I mean, it's what we're doing right now. It's what we do every week. It's what we do when we talk to each other. Storytelling is the most important thing that we can do and that we have done for ages. When I was in a school uh, learning my trade of cinematography, uh, I was surprised when they said the genesis of cinematography was campfire stories back in the Stone Age just sitting down in front of the fire and they would sit around and, and tell a story that would then turn into a story somewhere else, then turn into a story somewhere else. And over time, that campfire grew to like a stage setting, an auditorium, the silver screen, TVs, computers, laptops, anything where a story can come across. And the power of the image to communicate to us, we all know it. I mean, we see how many times you know, movies influence different people to do certain things, or maybe they don't influence, but they expose people to things. Photography through the years have exposed people to racial issues. They've exposed people to injustices across the globe. Um, you know, the, the damages that happened in Vietnam were exposed by a lot of the photographers that were there and the photographs came back and everybody's like, yo, we don't want this. This is terrible. That's, that's what the power of, and the responsibility of this craft really is. And, and you know, it, it's kind of that way. If you have a voice, you have to use it to say the right things. It's gonna influence millions of people. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Greg, may I, excuse me, may I share something? Yeah. Who's Hi, that? Greg, it's Rosa. It's Rosa. Rosa, how are you? <laughs> I, I'm doing great, thank you. Um, my husband's not here. He decided to go for a walk, so he's, he's, he's not participating. But I wanted to thank you for uh, putting words, exposing us to the words connected with what you do, which is an artistic expression. And I'm using that because that's what my husband uses. He's the artistic one of the two. And um, I'm more verbal. <laughs> I like words just because that's what I've been exposed to. But, you know, it is true what they say, a picture paints a thousand words, right? Absolutely. And that's your craft and that's your gift. And I just wanna thank you for um, making it a little bit more clear to me because I think a person who does what you do waits for the right, I mean, the light is everything. Timing, 
and it takes patience. <laughs> it does. You know, it takes patience. So I have a lot more respect. Not that I didn't, but I think when you gain more knowledge and understanding of what it is that you do, I think for the for 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 me, anyways, I'm speaking for myself and I'm just one person. I really appreciate the time that you are taking to share with us your craft, your gift, and your joy, because it is so obvious to me that you really love what you do. And like the saying goes, when you love what you do and do what you love, you never have to work another day in your life. I congratulate you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Rosa is Al Harrington's wife. And if you were able to attend our birthday celebration, or I, at some point we'll have our celebration online for you to look at, um, you will see a clip of, of Al Harrington uh, that Greg shot. And what is so evident to me in watching that clip is how much love and respect the person taking the video had for his subject. It just, it really shines through. And I, I feel like maybe that's one of the, the key ingredients besides, you know, understanding light, uh, understanding all these technicalities. It's that heart quality of loving your subject that I, I think is really even more important than, than being a technically good uh, photographer, perhaps. May I make a comment on that, Renee? Absolutely. You know, um, who's ever met my husband, and I've been with him for almost 20 years, I don't think I've, I've never really paid attention to that. I really haven't because I didn't really watch a lot of TV when I was growing up. But being around him and watching what he does kind of put me in a pocket where um, I really I really began to pay attention. And it's just as important as the subject matter, you know? But when I saw Greg work with Al, when he was video, uh, he, he, did, he shot him, um, you saw two magicians go to work. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm getting chills. I'm not kidding because, you know, I know what camera ready means and it, it means what it is. You're camera ready and ready to go to work. And that's what my husband is. I make sure that he that we respect the time of the artist who is photographing him, who is video to whatever it is. He's ready to go to work. He's ready to go. But even if you prepare, <laughs> that's one part of it. That's a component. But when you see, and I call them magicians because Greg is a magician at what he does. It, it, there's no doubt about it. You see it, you feel it, you feel it, okay? And then you see someone like Al behind, you know, in front of the camera and they're going to work. Um, they, I think they do it faster than most people. They just get it, they get it. And it's, it's nice to see them speak. That's not even speak so much. It's feel the same language. You have to be there to experience it. It's an energy and you feel it. I don't care how far off you are. <laughs> it, you don't have to be too far to, to see how, wow, it's a wow moment. How the it's magic is happening. Of the magic that's happening. But yeah. then you see Thank two people, but then you see two people, like I said, when you love what you do and do what you love, you never have to work another day in your life. This is who they are. This is the essence of who they are. And I'll leave it at that. Congratulations. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Marnita, Marnita, come close to the camera because I got to see uh, Greg working with you filming your uh, Afrofusion dance. And that was really a, a wonderful sight to, for me to behold, just how, how the two of you worked together and, and then what the finished result was. Yeah, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was, um, cause I, it was two times that I was with Greg and um, I, the, the first time he did, Greg, you just had this light and this energy and you're just like, just, I, I could feel that you really um, just had a love for what you do. And I love dancing. So for us to have loves 
and then just come together, it just felt like there was a flow, right? And um, yeah, I, I just really just felt like really um, safe and I felt like I could really express myself. Um, and then the second time, uh, it was for the the ten uh, for the the birthday of still in moving since there, and I was really I had just came out of work and I was just like I don't know what I want to do and I, but I had something, and I don't know just Greg you just have that that ump where you were just like okay well you know just like feel it put on some music and then we're just gonna do like a well come up from the bottom and I'm just gonna film you and I was like okay and then just to see it I'm just like wow I mean it. I, I was just really taken back because I, I just feel like he really, Greg, you really um, just showed and just lighted like what was going on in here and my love for it. So I appreciate you for you, you know? Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> um, I appreciate all that. It, and it's interesting because I can circle it back to seeing your way through. And the task of a photographer or a cinematographer is to understand, you know, what's in front of them and capture it for the best possible reasons and, and show just the rawness and the beauty of life. Maybe that's my view of it, but starting from the end and knowing that I have Marnita in front of me or Al Harrington or Krista as Hanuman, you know, like knowing where we are or, or what we're trying to get to shows me the way back to where I am. It's like, if I can see the path, like I have to travel down this way. I have to go through that road. That road's going to be a little bit tough for me to get there, but that's the road to take. Understanding that you can kind of see your way through. A, a good analogy is kind of like, um, when I first came here, Sarah had me in the ocean and I was really trying to deal with that because again, I'm just a black kid from LA and we don't swim in LA like that. The ocean is not the place to go just jump in. You know, it's not, that's not how it works. Um, so I always love the idea of surfing. I always love the idea of, of the ocean. I, I thought, it, you know, it's a magical, magical thing, but I was very out of touch and had no exposure to it. Sarah's a water baby on the opposite side of it. And she wanted me to swim with her and do all these things. So we were in the ocean and I'm trying to just be cool, calm and collected. And cause I don't want to look like, you know, I'm scared, but I was scared. And it was so interesting how the moment that we went snorkeling and I could see what was underwater, everything changed, everything changed just the able just the ability to see what it was that I was trying to do made me understand more of what I was able to do and then I could see my way through that and reach the goal that I was trying to reach and that's just being in the water and not be scared next to my girlfriend <laughs> but it's it's definitely that that ability to to a lot of times we can't see the connections now of what can get us to where we want to go. But we already have those connections laid out in a lot of the different other, other things that we've done in our lives. Um, our connections with other people, how we talk to each other, you know, how we, how we communicate in general. Like if, you're, if you need to talk to somebody business-wise and it needs to be, you know, who you are and all that kind of stuff, the way that you talk to them really should be the way that you talk to the person that you're at home with. You have to find a way to understand that person and communicate who you are and why you are. And then you can find your way to that conversation for the right reasons. <laughs> it's a through line, Renee, it's a through line. Everything I know line. it, I know it. Okay, well, um... I have a, a quote I'd like to bring up. It's the kind of the link quote between uh, last week's theme of jamming and riffing and this week's theme of seeing our way through. So jamming and riffing, we're kind of uh, improvising. We kind of don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> there, there are these riffs that we can follow along, I think, which is, might be like catching waves, these, these riffs. 
But so this is the the uh, linkage quote. It's from that very interesting person, Yogi Berra, who says these things that uh, make no sense whatsoever and are like at the same time perfectly illuminating. <laughs> So here's Yogi Berra's quote from yesterday. If you don't know where you are going, you might wind up somewhere else. <laughs> if you don't know where you are going, you might wind up someplace else. Someplace else. Yeah. And so I, I, it's such an interesting quote because is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mm -hmm. I <laughs> Is, is that is that the question? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, uh, it's not necessarily. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did want to use it as a. Uh, we can use that as a question, but I wanted to use it actually as a little um, segue into being able to see this three-minute um, video that you created, three-minute film. I believe that it does show really clearly an understanding of a storyline. So this, uh, did, what, is it called Super 8 film? Super 8, yep. Super 8. So this is what um, I think the pictures uh, of me as a little kid, or at least of our kids as little kids, I think it was me as a little kid was taken on a, a Super 8 um, film camera. And um, so he understands he's only got three minutes worth of literal film. And then you know how those old film cameras, you, you just come to the end of the film. That's it. There's just no more there. And he didn't even have a really accurate um, counter of how much film he was going through at at any one time. So he had to, over the course of two or three days, take pictures of this uh, family to convey this story. In, in just the three minutes, there were no retakes. <laughs> he just had to turn the film, on, the camera on, turn it off, or turn it on, off, uh, and see what he got to by the, the end of that last little frame of film. It goes a little bit deeper. Um, it was two days and it was only two days because like the end of one day, it was raining really bad and we couldn't leave this kid out in the rain. Um, <laughs> so we had met this family the first day. <laughs> like we just walked into their house like, hey, um, my cousins said that you guys are willing to work with us on this film. Um, I need you to do this, 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 this. And I just directed the whole thing on the spot. And then we shot a movie. <laughs> like, that's exactly how it happened. But even with the, the, the film counter thing, yeah, just understanding what we were trying to do and how we were trying to go and knowing that I couldn't rely on that anymore, had to find a way to shape the movie so that it made sense. And it made sense just off the, the idea. So it's it was pretty fantastic that it worked out like that <laughs> so can you show it to us please yes we can do that let's go here boom boom close that and open this and then we're going to go back to zoom and then share screen all right it's a film called straight eight um, we definitely got into the 2020 Cannes Film Festival with this film shot on, can you guys see this still? Yes. Okay. And I need to make sure that you guys can hear it also, right? Yes. You want to optimize your sound. Optimize. Okay. What's that? It's called Oasis. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's called Oasis. Can I, I just want to make sure that we can hear this. Where are my controls? I think you might have to stop sharing and then when you share, click on the sound and optimize for video. Okay, one second. Thank you, Noah. 
Ah, there we go. Boom, boom. Yep. Very good. Okay, so here we go. That was fun. Can't believe that movie came out. <laughs> it's amazing. Krista, as a writer, you have something you want to? No, no, I was just going to say that made me cry in three minutes. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. I'm crying. You. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like David's crying too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing what we can do with a simple breath or a simple look or just three minutes when there's kind of this intention that we see through and to to go forth with that. And that's what I see in this. There there was even though there it was vague at first and then it really was all coming together um, very quickly as it did, there was a clear intention. And I think in all the things that we do, it can be just even passing someone a moment on the street, but that clear intention of if it's a, a kind look or a really seeing the beauty in all, there's so much power in that. It's, it's interesting that you even said that, uh, Sarah, because communication is really, you know, at the heart of it. 
communicating in the images, communicating in, in the, the, the look, you know, even seeing how the kid looked at uh, the hula dancer, um, like understanding that those types of interactions speak so much to us all. And it, it's interesting because it took three minutes, right? And it draws a little bit of emotion. It's, it's kind of hard to, to like, okay, we live in a world of instant gratification. I'm not gonna go too hard into this because uh, it's something that I really like to speak on, but we live in a world of instant gratification and people look for the easy way out in a lot of different regards and seeing your way through the hard way, usually the, the harder things do take more time. Like if you do that, these interactions become faster and faster. These understandings of each other and this obstacles that you might be facing can process that much quicker, but you have to go through the process of learning yourself, of healing yourself, learning your community, how to contribute to your community. And then everything just starts to be a little bit quicker. You know, so it's, it's almost like the tortoise and the hare, right? The tortoise will always finish the race before the hare because he took that long, slow, arduous journey. It, it, it really does. That story is accurate. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to go into that. That's a whole different tangent that I could talk for years about. Hmm. I, I thought I'd call on Kirk if he's behind that screen as a fellow artist and see what uh, light he might shed on the subject of seeing our way through. Um, really enjoyed the film, um, especially with the story behind it and um, the the um, sort of roughness of it, the, you know, the roughness of the edges, the jiggleness, it's like a, um, all of that, uh, you know, sort of fed into the, the magic of it. You know, it is such a big topic, like you're saying, uh, when you talk about vision or seeing, uh, seeing one ways through, one's way through. So I, I don't, I, I, I don't really have anything to add. Maybe next time, but thank you. Thanks for the uh, the film and sharing today. I love the idea of clear intention because that's what I was feeling, both with the photographs as well as with the film. That and that clear intention behind that. It just seemed like there was a witness that was still, even though the phenomena was moving. And I also saw in the pictures, particularly of the folks from LA, but I'm from LA too, so I got it. In both things, there's some kind of still witness that is unmovable. And so when you see all of this, all the then, somehow the phenomena just emerges. I don't know how that's done because I'm not a filmmaker where that, that's magic, obviously. But you're coming or someone is coming from a very deep place. And uh, so I, I really been quite taken uh, by your work and it kind of uh, really, I think shows an inner dimension that I hadn't appreciated as much. Uh, at one time, 15 years ago, I had to do a documentary and it had to be about city clerks. It's probably the least most interesting topic you could think of, what does a clerk do and all that. But we came up with the idea that they were ground zero for democracy because there were some election clerks there too. At mm -hmm. the time, we didn't think much of it, but it was a real challenge to make a documentary of four minutes where people would even be awake at the end. <laughs> but uh, so I really appreciate the work you've done because yours is like there's another dimension than even the one the ones we try to incorporate so thank you so much for your contribution thank you for that that's amazing thank you yeah I really love what you said about the still witness and I wonder if that's part of the joy of a photographer or an artist or that you get to kind of harness that space that doesn't always get nurtured or even celebrated in a lot of our day-to-day -day routines and it's just such a rich and delicious space to be in so thanks for that way of, of verbalizing it yes that was really helpful thank you so much
Well, we have reached the top of a very full and wonderful hour. And um, I'm so grateful to all of you for contributing to it uh, with these um, very perceptive listening ears and watching eyes. Um, I feel these still centers with each of you, whether or not you actually said anything or you just lent us your presence and your smile and the, the little glint that I saw around corners of eyes. <laughs> and I, I wanted to ask Kevin Capretto if he would give our vote of thanks uh, for the day to our uh, speaker, Greg Hatton. Yeah, um, Greg, wonderful job. I mean, I, I love when a speaker keeps the intention from the very beginning all the way to the end. And, you know, um, if we were in a movie theater right now, I would say this was a well- put together production. So um, it was just wonderfully put. And I think all of us, you know, all of you for tuning in on a Saturday afternoon or morning, depending on where you are, it's, um, it's a great conversation circle. And I really look forward to more of these with all of you now that I'm closer to the time zone. But um, it was just beautifully done. And wonderful video presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much. Great to see everyone. Here. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Aloha. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Thank you both Thank so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Aloha. Aloha.